Hi there, how are you? It's Ilze B. I am a Latvian and I teach Latvian to English speakers. But I not only teach Latvian, but I also talk about Latvian culture. And that is actually one of my favorite topics because I studied culture. I studied culture when I studied economy. I tried to figure out how culture affects economy. But that's a subject that would be too complicated to discuss here. So I'm going to talk about something else. I was thinking about you this week. Yes, I was thinking about you more than other weeks. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about who you are and what kind of a person you are. You, my subscriber. If you are my YouTube subscriber, I think you expect something else from me than if you are my email subscriber. People who subscribe to my emails actually write to me sometimes. I really like reading the letters, so if you subscribe to my email and you haven't written to me yet, I would be glad to receive a letter from you where you would tell me what motivates you to learn about Latvia, Latvian language or Latvian culture. If you are not subscribing to my email, you might comment below under my videos. I really, really want to know. I want to also know what you want me to talk about. Last time when I posted the video about Latvian weddings, there was a question under my video on my YouTube channel. Somebody asked me, what should I know about Latvian girls? And it's not an easy question to answer because there's a lot to know, but on the other hand, we are human. Latvian girls are like girls anywhere else, probably. So if you know anything about girls in general, you should be fine. But about Latvian people, I was thinking about how to talk about us, the Latvians. And I came across a blog post by a Latvian woman called Ginta Filia Solis, who blogs, she generally blogs about spiritual stuff, but this time she wrote about Latvians, and what her posts are like, she actually translates, she translates from Russian, and this time she translated 90 observations by a Russian journalist about Latvians, and I read through them all. It's, of course, too many for me to translate and quote them all to you here, but I picked 25 that I thought were funny enough and true enough. So today I'm going to read those Russian journalist observations that were first translated into Latvian, and now I translated and sort of adopted them for you to hear them in English. I just have to tell you that the journalist's name is Tatyana Krinitskaya, and she's not one of the Russians who lives in Latvia. She actually is a Russian woman from Russia. So she doesn't probably have more in-depth experience about Latvians. So observation number one, her observation number one, you are sick and tired explaining where Latvia is located. And that is quite true. Observation number two. You are sick and tired explaining that Latvia is not Russia. And that is also true. And observation number three. You are sick and tired explaining to the smartest of foreigners that Latvia isn't the same as Lithuania. I don't have to explain this one too often, but I actually had to two days ago. Or was it last night? Yes, it was last night. Somebody confused Latvia with Lithuania. I was happy to know that they actually know about the Baltic States, which is not often here in the United States. Uh, observation number four. You only know few people who can speak less than three languages and you don't know anyone who can speak less than two. That would be true for Latvians in Latvia, but this is generally about Latvians in Latvia. Here in the United States, of course, I know a lot of people who only speak one language, American English. Observation number five. This is a funny one. You get withdrawal pain and seizures if you are cut off rye bread with caraway seeds. Observation number six. 
you know at least three choir conductors by name and how they look. Yeah, I do. Because the song festival is big in Latvia. Next, number seven. Judging by the neat countryside properties, it seems like every Latvian has a landscaper's gene. That's a nice compliment. I also garden here and I tell everybody that this is what Latvians do. Of course, not all Latvians do it, but quite a few. Observation number eight. It seems funny to you how people think that you need to press birch trees in order to get birch tree sap. Yeah, that is funny. Do you know how to get birch tree sap? This might be a topic for another video. I'll try to do that. I'll try to make it. Observation number nine. You definitely own several mushroom books, a mushroom basket and a special knife, forest boots and an old jacket with huge pockets that smells of forest. And you surprise Europeans who think that mushrooms only grow on mushroom farms. Yes, we go to pick mushrooms in the forest and that's a fun activity and it's healthy too. Observation number 10. Every summer you go to forest to pick blackberries and then you make blackberry jam for winter. I used to do that, but I haven't done it for years. Of course you do it in Latvia, not here. Observation number 11. You know that wild strawberries can best be found in the numerous trenches that are left in Latvian forests from World War II. Yeah, that is a romantic kind of a observation and also a sad one because indeed there are still a lot of trenches left from World War II in Latin forests. My husband, when he saw that, he was really surprised and I said, well, it's just a normal thing. Observation number 12. If a person doesn't know how to tell a pine cone from a fir tree cone, there's a problem. Yeah, do you know how to tell it? You should, there's a problem. What's wrong with you if you don't? I'm just kidding. Yeah, but true. Of course we know how to tell pine cones from fir tree, co from fir tree cones. Observation number 13. In spring, there will definitely be a news report about arrival of migrating birds. Yes, of course. Observation number 14. Playing with food, the activity so popular with American children is an unnegotiable no-no for Latvian children. Of course, you can't play with food. Observation number 15. A lunch break lasts for an hour and the world should wait. If you don't want to wait, you go you know where. That's what she said. I didn't say that. Yeah. Observation number 16. You think that everyone must sing on Midsummer's Eve and there must be a bonfire. It's a must. Of course, I totally agree. Observation number 17. You think that people who drink vodka for Ligo are not true Latvians. I won't comment on this. Observation number 18. You feel guilty when you buy ready-made dough for gingerbread cookies before Christmas. And you feel like a traitor if you buy ready-made cookies. This is a funny one. Observation number 19. No problem if there is snow up to your ankles, knees or hips. You can't understand why they close all schools and stores in England after the snow barely covered the ground. And it's true for here too. I couldn't understand. It seemed funny for, to me that they closed stores after the first snowflakes fell down. But now I'm used to it. Observation number 20. In summer you feel that you must walk barefoot. 
Yeah, you must because it feels so good in Latvia because the moss is so soft or grass is soft, unlike here in North Carolina. Number 21. For you, there are five seasons in a year. Winter, spring, summer, autumn, and a hockey season. And that is true for many Latvians, not so much for me. But um, when I was in Latvia, I used to watch hockey too. I never went to hockey games as a fan, really. I went to a Latvian hockey game in Ireland, though, where Latvians living in Ireland played. That was fun. Observation number 22. For you Latvians, the song festival is as important as Olympic Games. Yes, definitely, definitely. Great, he thinks the same. Observation number 23. It is not possible that you don't know any Janis, Peteris, Andris or Liga. Yes, it is true. I think every Latvian knows one, at least. Observation number 24. This will be a funny one. You know at least 10 people with a surname Berzinch or Berzinja. And that's my surname. And observation number 25. Out of all nations who live around Latvia, you Latvians are the only people who can pronounce the diphthong ear. And to pay respect to Tatiana Krinitskaya, the Russian journalist, I will teach you one Latvian word today. That Latvian word means a Russian woman, or a Russian lady, or a Russian girl. And that is a single word. Listen. Kriaviete. One more time. Kriaviete. You see, there are two diphthongs here in this word. Kriya viete. I guess I read it all. And that's it from me now. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do so. And if you haven't subscribed to my email correspondence, you can do it by clicking the link below. Because I'm going to focus more on people who want to learn the language in my emails. I'll send you more tips. I have decided to change the structure how I communicate with you a little bit. I will talk more about culture and people in my videos and I will give you more specifics about the language in my emails. So you can always subscribe also from my website. My website address is ilzb.com. But now I'll say bye-bye, ata, till the next time.